Hi, this is Joette with BalloonCoach.com and today I am going to cover a checklist of things that you need to take into account for your social media and your website. I have been blessed that since January of 2015, I have worked with hundreds of balloon professionals around the world to help them grow a thriving balloon business. And one of the services that I often provide is that I go and look at their Facebook accounts, their Instagram, their websites, and any other things that they have online that represents them to give them a fresh perspective of somebody else looking at those items. Because so many times we're so busy working on our business, working in our business, that things that we think people just know fall through the cracks. And so what I've done today is I have a basic checklist for you to help you review. And some of you, as you go through the checklist, you might have all the things, but others of you may be missing some of these key components. So what I'm gonna do is pull up this checklist. And if you are a part of my Balloon Coach Community Facebook group, that is where you will find this file. I'm also going to be putting this up as a free blog on ballooncoach.com. And then we'll also have the um, checklist information there for you and the replay of this if you need a boost later down the road. So social media is booming. When I started in the balloon industry in 2003, we did not have this amazing social media like we have today. Um, it was definitely in its infancy back then. And so you as a balloon professional now in 2019, have the ability to launch a company and do double digits within five weeks. And the reason I know that is I talk to balloon professionals that are doing it. There are people who started dabbling in the balloon industry maybe a year or two ago, but then they quit their full-time job, launched their balloon business full-time, and in five weeks are already doing $10,000 a month in sales. And the reason that they're being able to do that is because of the power of social media and online marketing. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is some steps that you may have already taken, but you need to refresh and look over this on an every six month basis. And you need to make sure that you update some of the things at the bottom. So here we go. And Jennifer, thank you so much. That's so sweet. All right. So here's my 14 steps. Ready, set, go. Where are you located? Is it very easy for me as a first time visitor to your website or to your Facebook to know where you're located? What area do you serve? Do you let me know, like Party People Events, we service Central Florida from coast to coast with offices located in Orlando and Auburndale. I want people to know very quickly and easily that the Lakeland, Auburndale area, Polk County is ours, and Orlando is our other office. Those are the offices, but we actually service coast to coast in Central Florida. That's important, and why do I say that? Because with the wonderful power of social media, your pictures may catch people's interest in somewhere else, even on another part of the globe. But I even get phone calls from time to time from people in California saying, we would like to hire you for your event. And I'm like, great, we'd love to help you out. Where is your event gonna be? And they tell me, and I'm like, sometimes if I don't recognize the city, I'll say, in what state? And they'll go, oh, California. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to California unless you're playing my planes, plane ticket, but I'd be glad to refer you to other people there. So you wanna make sure people up front know when they're looking at your online presence, what state you're in and what your service area is. If not, you could waste a lot of time doing a quote <laughs> and it's for the wrong place. What services do you offer? Do your clients easily see all the services that you offer? Number four, how does a client contact you to hire you? I'm amazed at how many places I go in and I struggle to find an email address or a phone number to get a hold of a company, okay? To be efficient and save time, you want to have a detailed contact form on your website. And I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. I'm gonna go over these 14 steps and then we're gonna go piece by piece to show you where sometimes these fall through the cracks. 
So I want to make sure that you put a company phone number somewhere. That is if you answer the phone. I know there are some balloon companies like Balloons by Tommy in Chicago, but they prefer not to talk on the phone. So they are super efficient with the systems that they have put online and they communicate with all of their clients via email, their contact form, and very rarely do they pick up the phone. So you will not find their phone number on their website. However, if you do pick up the phone and talk to your clients and you do have people that you're paying to answer them or you yourself are answering your phone, make sure that that's clear for people because in some areas, especially in the South, people still like to talk on the phone and talk to a human. So again, if you're putting out your phone number, please make sure that you are answering it or that you have a very clear way that you're telling people to leave their messages and how long they should think that they're going to have to wait to hear back from you. Are you going to call them back within two hours? Are you calling them back within 24 hours? On your voicemail, are you suggesting that they go to an online contact form? However you set that up, you want to have a good process in place. Let's see, email address to contact your company. So even if you have a contact form, I still encourage people to also have an email address because sometimes that just makes people feel a little bit more comfortable. And it could be that you then have an automated email that says, hey, if you're wanting to book us for a new appointment, please fill out our contact form and then have that link. Those, that is automation that you can put into place. Number eight, do you showcase photos of your work? Customers love to see the venues of where you work at. So here in Central Florida, people love to see the photos of us at Gaylord Palms, at the convention center, at the local country clubs, in the local parks for events. In Lakeland, they love to see us in the venues that they rent or in people's homes if you do a lot of social events. So I know that there are photos out there that are stock photos that you can get from different balloon professionals who sell them or that you can do from the manufacturers. And it's okay to have some of those on your social media or on your website as long as you're giving credit to the person whose photos they are and you have permission to use them. That's really important. But more than having those flashy photos of other people's work, having photos of your work so people know what your style is and they see it in your local venues, that is key to make people feel connected to you. It starts to build that trust factor that, hey, you've decorated the venue they're gonna be at and that makes them feel good. Number nine, does your social media posts have consistency to them? Are you posting on a weekly basis? Are you posting on an every three days basis or weekly? Or when you go into that social media account, have you not posted anything for months? When you're inconsistent with your posting and it's been months or maybe even a year before you, since you've done your last social media post, it makes people think that you're no longer active. So having some type of consistency is key and kind of look at that, check out your dates. Is your business page correct? Or is it set up as a personal Facebook page? So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But this is a key mistake that many people have made over the years and then just not changed it. Or when they're coming in, you don't know the difference. When you're on Facebook, there's what's called a personal profile and then there's a business page and they are two different things. And the key is a personal page can have friends and a business page has fans. So again, we'll take a look at that, but make sure where you're set up and if you need help in making changes, send me a message, that's what I'm here for. All right, number 12, do you like, comment, and share on referral partners' business pages? All right, so this is something to keep in check and this is something you can do on an ongoing basis is if you're wanting to build that no like, and trust factor on social media, don't be all about you. It's not just about you, it's about the other people that you want to do business with. So it is really important that when you're working in social media, that you, if you're wanting people to know, like, and share your posts, <laughs> right? If you're wanting people to like it, comment, share, you need to set that trend, lead by example, and go onto the pages of the venues that you work at or want to work at 
at the vendors who give you business. You want to make sure that you're actively engaged in their pages and commenting and sharing their photos in addition to asking them to look at your information. Does that make sense? So if I go onto my local florist page and I see what she's posted and I'm like, Wow, Heather, that is beautiful floral decor. I love working with you. You always exceed your client's expectation, and I'm, I'm always wowed by your decor. That's going to make her feel good, and it's going to probably also be more likely that she's going to come over to Party People Events page and watch and follow what we're doing. So the more engaged you are with people and the more that you like, share, and comment their posts, the more likely they're going to reciprocate and do the things for you. I hope that makes sense. So number 13, do you tag venues and people in your photos? This is something that so many people don't take advantage of, that we're just super busy when we're putting up a post and we may forget to just tag in the venue. We may forget to tag in key people or we may forget to thank the people who gave us that referral. When you're using social media, this is the time to give the shout outs. We would love to thank our longtime client, Regina, for um, referring us to her friend, Jane. We had a great time doing Jane's baby shower. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to work again at Eagle Brook Country Club, tagging that in. Putting all those things out there, now it's highlighted. Now that may show up in other people's feeds. And now those people can comment, like, and share. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're using those tools that are right there for you, but sometimes we just post something and don't think to click on the other things. And the last tip I have on here for number 14 is are you waiting on perfection to take action? I even did a blog on this a while ago. So many times in our industry, people are not having websites or they're not doing social media or they're not posting on a regular basis because they're waiting for the perfect picture. They're working for the perfect client to show off. They are working on perfection of how their words are phrased. In, sorry, imperfect action is much better than perfection because when you take imperfect action and do something now people are going to see you and they're going to be able to build that know, like, and trust. If you're waiting on perfection, you will never launch your website. You will never put up a social media. You will never give a shout out because you're afraid that something's going to happen. And what's great about websites and social media is things are able to be edited after the fact. And I am known for this big time. It drives my husband crazy because my husband is a very good wordsmith and he is excellent at grammar. I'm not so much, and I am always passionate about, I want to get my message out there. I want to share something with you when I'm excited. I want to share photos with our clients when party people has knocked it out of the ballpark when they've done things, and there are often times that I will get a note from my husband throughout the day saying, hey, honey, go check that post, typo on line three. I go back in, I edit it, and go, and you know what? Most of the time, nobody's ever seen the mistake other than my husband. And then other times, a lot of my followers, y'all send me messages too and let me know about my typos. But here's the thing. I'm getting content out there and in the eyes of people. And now when somebody sends me a typo, I know that people are reading my post. So I encourage you with all of my heart and soul that you take action daily to help yourself out in social media. Do not wait on perfection to make it happen, all right? So those are 14 steps that I flew by. And the reason I did that is I want to respect your time because for some people, I know this is all the time you've got. 15 minutes to check out a training and then you're gonna stop. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and detail through this and show you some of those things that I'm talking about. So if these are areas that you struggle in, we can show you the steps. What I would love to do for those of you who are on live with me right now on um, this live webinar, if you have questions about the things that I've covered so far, please type them in. The other thing is, is if you have a website or a Facebook business page that you'd be willing for me to review live, I would love for you to share that with me. The other thing that I want to let you know before I go into showing you the step-by-step -step is that with ballooncoach.com, 
I have been in the balloon industry full time since 2003. I've created the resources to let you know how I have grown my business and what has worked for me. If you're needing extra support, if you're wanting daily encouragement, if you want to be able to hang out with like-minded business professionals who are growing thriving balloon businesses, I encourage you to go to ballooncoach.com and check out Balloon Boss Mastermind. It is our monthly program for just $97 and it gives you access to over $2,500 of online training at any time at your fingertips and it also gives you time with me on a monthly basis where we have a live Q&A call. So wanted to let you know that that exists and now we're going to go on to Facebook. All right, so let's see people who have um, let me know. So I'm going to start by explaining to you about the Facebook pages, the difference between a personal page and a business page, and showing you a couple of things that I have found that people have messed up on. They're not taking advantage of their personal page for their business, because I know a lot of people tell me they want to keep their personal and their business separate. But I'm letting you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And so I've learned over the years to utilize my personal page for my friends and family to follow me, but at the same time to then share things from my business page that I want other people to see. So let me go ahead and read these questions real quick. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so Daisy's saying that I can look at hers. Great. Um, Michelle's giving me access to hers. Thank you, Sherry. Um, all right, so Sherry says, I haven't even set up a Facebook or anything else yet. We are pursuing our business license first and practicing with balloons. Congratulations. Hanging out with ballooncoach.com, reading my blog that's free. And then being a part of any of our other programs will help you as you grow your business. So I'm delighted to see that you're starting out on the right foot and getting this information ahead of time. So Sherry, what I'm going to show you right now about the difference between a personal and a business page are going to be really key. And for any of you who are new to the balloon industry, um, when you go to the homepage, ballooncoach.com, you can type in, um, the search bar for my blog and say hobby slash business, or even if you just write the word hobby, and it shows you the steps to take to make sure that you get your business license and your insurance and the other things that you need as you're getting started. So congratulations. Um, as you practice with your balloons, take really great pictures of them that you can then use on your social media and website in the future. All right, and a couple more people are letting me have access to their things, so I love it, yay. Um, and we have one person who is redoing their website. Um, all right, so one of her concerns is um, because in our industry, sometimes people will take photos of other people's work and use it, that instead she's only um, posting videos on her website or possibly social media. What I'm gonna let you know is yeah, bad things happen sometimes if people take other people's photos and, and don't give um, the proper credit that they should. I have a blog on that. Um, but you know what? The way I grew Party People Events over the years to over $150,000 a year in sales and now Party People Events as a team, I sold the company and combined with several other businesses and I'm their marketing director, we now do over $600,000 a year in sales and we do put our photos out there. And most of the time we watermark them, but for years I didn't watermark them because I was so busy. I would rather have business because people see my photos than worry about if somebody else is going to grab my photos and try to use them as their own. Now, I encourage people to use photos correctly and responsibly, which what that means is if you're on Facebook and you see somebody's photos that you like, what you need to do if you want to share that with your people is hit the word share. Share it over to your page and say, wow, I love these balloons created by Jonathan and his team in Orlando, Florida. Wow, we would love to bring this type of design to our clients here in Michigan. Okay, so now you've tagged us, you said who it's from, but your people are getting to see what those balloons are and that you want to create that. So just throwing that out there for you guys, that that's the proper etiquette. Never ever 
copy a person's picture and put it up on your website like it's your own work. If you want to use somebody else's picture on your website, you must ask permission for that, which we actually with Party People Events um, did with that with a couple of balloon companies when we didn't have the photos of exactly what we wanted because some of our contracts say we can't take photos of some of our most awesome work. Um, we'd rather have the money than the photo, but we borrowed photos from other people with their permission and put them up on our website and we tagged them in it. So again, if you're ever using somebody else's photo, you have to get permission for that. All right, so back to Facebook. Here's my personal page, Joette Myers Giardina. Many times I go on here and I see where it says intro and it says that you are a part of another business that sometimes when I click this, it doesn't take me to the right place. So I want you to see right here on my personal page, my friends are looking at this. They are seeing that I am ballooncoach.com. They're seeing that I'm the marketing director and certified balloon artist at Hardy People Events. So look at your Facebook page. You can go on it now while I'm talking if you want or afterwards, but look at this and see, can people tell who you are and what your company is? And now watch, when I click on Party People Events, it takes me to our Party People Events business page. I am the marketing director for Party People Events, so I am able to post as an admin for this page all of our photos. Our team goes out and does the event, and then Jonathan uploads the photos for me, and then I watermark them and put them into this Facebook. I'm telling you that process because I wanna let you know that as you grow your business, you can hire people to do those parts of your business for you so that you don't have to spend all your time doing that. Now, that link worked from my personal page to the business page. Sometimes what happens is a little blue flag comes up instead. So if you ever have that happen, go to your business page and what I'm gonna do is click on home. Our company used to be Party People Celebration Company, so that's why it's up here and it's different than Party People Events. The wonderful people at Facebook do allow you once to make a change and integrate it to somewhere else, um, but you wanna be pretty confident with what your name's gonna be for your business up front so you don't have to go through this change. I now have highlighted in blue up in the HTTP line and I've copied it, okay? Now that allows me to go back to my personal page and if the link wasn't working correctly, I can go back in and edit the settings and put that link in there. So I wanted to make sure you saw how you can get that link, okay? Um, so it's up at the very top. When you are now on your business page and you're looking at it, think about it from your client's perspective, all right? When they go down over here, there's a part that's about party people events. And if you haven't filled it out here, it's gonna be blank over here on the right. It's underneath these um, white balloons with the blue and all the colors. So I typed in party people events serve central Florida from coast to coast with balloon decor, right? And we have offices in Orlando and Auburndale, and it's giving me this information and I'm telling them where they can go to do the contact form and the phone number to contact. All of that is here and all you have to do is push publish for it to be on your page, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is I want you to look at the about section. So it's on the far left. I went to about, and I'll be honest, we have to update this address <laughs> because we recently moved to a new warehouse. You want to make sure that all of your addresses are the same. So the address that's for your website is the address for your social media because if not, Google can tell the difference and they think maybe that you've gone out of business. So I'm letting you know that it's important for you to have all that information together, okay? So I'm just throwing that out there for you guys that you want to make sure that where you're consistent on everything on social media and if you move, if you update your mailing address, you wanna make sure that that is everywhere the same. When you are in 
your about page? Do you have a phone number? If you use a phone, make sure it's there, okay? And now let's go to the home page. As we scroll down in this, this was a photo put up yesterday, okay? I then go down and then this is a photo from the 14th. This is a photo from the 13th. Are you getting the uh, consistency here? A photo from the 12th. We post on a daily basis and sometimes we post twice a day. I encourage you with your social media, sometimes people try to do too many formats at once and they do them all poorly. So pick the one that seems to be working best for you, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or any other outlet you want. Pick at least one and do well. If you're doing two, you may want to use a program like Hootsuite that can help you um, put your post in two different places at the same time. So I just encourage you to look over your website, look over your social media pages, and if you find that you haven't posted in several months, people are going to think you're out of business possibly. So I encourage you to start something. We're not working on perfection. So right now, if you haven't posted in months, your goal is once a week, okay? If you've been posting once a week, then maybe you wanna move up to twice a week. But what you wanna do is you want people to get to know, like, and trust you through seeing the photos, and it doesn't always have to be new photos. Many times people tell me that the reason they're not posting on social media is they haven't been active and haven't done any events recently. It doesn't have to be a recent event. It can be a photo from 10 years ago. It can be a photo from a class you took. It can be an inspiration photo that you tag and say, hey, my friend Joe at Party People did this event and we want to do the same kind of look for you in our town. So I just want to encourage you that a post doesn't always have to be current work. Just having something out there is really important. Right, and so Lena was talking about that sometimes that you can post things to Instagram and Facebook at the same time. One of the apps that you can use to help with your Instagram and social media, like with Instagram, if you're wanting to post three photos at once rather than just one, on my phone, there is a program and it's called Layout, L-A-Y-O-T, and it looks like the Instagram colors um, with that purple, red, orange kind of hue going on, and I'm gonna see if you get to see it. Maybe not. All right, right there in the blue. Next to the camera, it says layout, and it's got the three little things square. That is a um, tool that you can get. It's a free um, app, layout, L-A-Y-O-T, sorry, L-A-Y-O-U-T, and um, it allows you to put three photos together that you want to make into a collage for Instagram. And then you can save it on your phone and, or automatically just put it up to Instagram. Yay. All right, so I've talked to you about how to check things on your page to make sure that it's looking good and that people are finding you. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to the people who've told me that I can go look at their sites and give some um, feedback. So here we go. All right, so, whoops, that's interesting. Didn't work for me. All right, let me just type it in from here. Copy, paste, and it's still not pasted, so I gotta type it from here. All right, so we're gonna go Celebrations Balloon Company for Sharon. And you know what, Sharon, let's see. You know. And Sharon, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go to your personal page.
because this is going to help me too to be able to show you what I was thinking. So when I click on about, it doesn't show me that you have the business page. Okay. So this is not showing me that it's connected to you at all. So just wanted to throw that out there. And I know some people do that on purpose. Some people don't. Um, the reason that I like to have um, my personal page to my um, business page is because a lot of times I will post something on party people events and I will then share it to my personal page and say, hey friends, if you haven't checked out what we've got going on with ballooncoach.com recently, here's what we're doing and hey, please go like our page. All right, so this is fun. All right, so what's really cool is on her page, she actually has this wonderful video of balloons popping and the wonderful messages going out. Sharon is a part of our um, program with uh, ballooncoach.com and she actually got access to this video through one of our trainings. So it was something that Liz Romani had set up and gave permission for people in the training to use. So I love that you have made use of a video on there. That's something that gets people's um, attention right away. Looks great, Sharon. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna look at the about page. And look, it gives me an address. Um, says SIRS, Ferndale, Washington, and nearby areas. That is something that so many people miss. So many people do not use the serve button. Please include it because it's so frustrating as a person that goes on and looks at so many websites where I can't find out where people are from. It gives me her phone number. It gives me her um, link to her website. That is awesome. And then she has information right here on the Ferndale Event Center. That is great. And there are tags, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's excellent. Then, um, let me see. All right, so now this one's saying February 22nd and January 27th. So when I'm looking at that, I'm not seeing as much consistency, but let me double check because sometimes it's me not clicking on things correctly. So this one was from 20 minutes ago. That's awesome. <laughs> um, this one was yesterday. How fun is that? So a wonderful linking wall with this great retro sign. Fun to see how that turned out. I love it. And um, very fun and festive. So one of the things that I would just suggest on this, um, it says some fun balloon decor we did last month for a gymnastics meet. One of the things that I would encourage people to do is go ahead and tag in the location of where you are at for that event when you're posting it. Um, even if it's 10 months later, you can still tag that location and that will just help it when um, people are searching for things for people to find photos of that venue. All right, so yay, Sharon. So great, you passed the test of us being able to know the area you serve, know where you're located, get your phone number, and have a website. Awesome job. Yay, thanks for sharing. All right, so let's see what else we've got out there. All right, so I'm gonna check out for Denise. Denise has reddogballoons.com. Let me go check that out. All right, so here we've got reddogballoons.com. And about the owner, so right up front, I know who I'm doing business with. All right, um, it's telling me about Candy Cup, so that's obviously an important product that she's wanting to sell. Right here where it says contact us, perfect, I've got a phone number, and I've got an email address, that's wonderful. The one thing that if you can, you want to make sure that you make those clickable, and when I did click on that, that activated my email system, so that's great. Take that off, try to take this off here. Excellent, excellent. All right, it lets me know if I want to request a quote, then I can go right here 
and hello, what is your first name? And I type in my name. Please provide us with your contact number and email address. What's the date of your event? What are the hours of the event? How many hours are you requesting service because entertainment? When would you like us to arrive? What is your physical address? Excellent. Describe the event. And is the event inside or outside? Those are very important. I would encourage you to put a third line, which is both. Because often what happens is somebody is like, well, we're going to have the party inside, but we want you to entertain outside. Or we're having the party inside, but we need a balloon arch outdoors. So a lot of times I have a third choice on here, which is um, both. What services would you like a quote for? So she's letting them know right up front. They offer balloon twisting, decorating, and candy cups. And it says choose as many as you like. So that's great. And now it says thank you for requesting a quote. We will respond within 24 hours. Awesome. I love that. Why do I like that? Denise is letting the client know I'm going to respond to you within 24 hours of you doing this. Now here's the thing. When you put that out there, to provide excellent customer service and for you to continue to develop that know, like, and trust factor and you want people to trust you that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do, you say that you're gonna do that within 24 hours, then that means even if that quote comes in at midnight on Friday, that by midnight on Saturday, they're gonna have a quote, okay? So you wanna make sure that whatever you put out there you're going to be able to do. And if you're a person who works really crazy weekends, and this may not always happen and something might fall through the cracks, then make sure that you're not setting that expectation, okay? So if you say that we're gonna respond within 24 hours, make sure that you do. And for some people, that might be just having automated email that goes on during your busy time that says, thank you so much for requesting a quote. This is our busy time. We will have the direct numbers to you within da da da. Because you're saying that you'll respond. It doesn't say that you're going to actually give them a quote. So that's kind of open, which is nice. Okay. And then um, Flavia was saying on hers, she lets people know about their business hours. So that's great. So yay. Thank you, um, Denise, for sharing that. I love that you've got um, your form set up and making it easy for people to go through that process. And now within your um, balloons, it's showing um, different things that you do. So I love it. Yay. And anything with balloon lights is always amazing. All right. So good job. All right. Let me see who else had things for me to do. All right. Danielle is with us today from New Orleans. And I am so excited because this summer, if you have not heard, um, 2019 is my time to go and try travel to nine different cities across the United States. And one of my wonderful hostesses is going to be Danielle when I'm in New Orleans in July. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go to ballooncoach.com and live tour. I'd love to see you guys on the road this summer. Um, we're going to be doing some really cool stuff to help you with your business. So Danielle, I am on your website, um, New Orleans um, Party Boutique. And on the homepage, it tells me right there, contact us. It's letting us know that um, she does balloon decor and the types of decor. That's excellent. And let's see, when it says contact us, it takes me right to a contact page where I'm putting in my name, my company, uh, email and phone, um, the event location, the event date, all of these things are super important and that's what I want you to understand. The more information that you put into a contact form for people to fill out for you, the less time you're going to spend going back and forth in phone calls or emails to follow up with people to get these details. To make yourself as efficient as possible, you make the most out of your website. Having this type of detailed contact form is critical. So um, lots of great information. The other thing that she put in here is she asked people, how did you hear about us? The reason that that's good is you want to know what is working for you. How is your business growing? And if a person has actually referred them to you, you wanna thank that customer. 
if the, what you're doing on your Google ads is working, your Instagram, people are actually paying attention to you on social media, you or they're a returning customer, which is totally kudos, wonderful. You want to know this information. And right here, um, this was a great example is um, Denise has the event will be indoors, outdoors, or both. So that was just that suggestion I had from the last website um, was just to go ahead for um, red dog balloons. Is if you go ahead and add that both, um, it just helps for those situations where that happens. Yay, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the homepage for just a second. And I know this sounds really funny because typically if it says N-O-L-A, most people are gonna know that's New Orleans. But let's pretend that I'm from another country and I just recently moved to New Orleans and I don't know that lingo yet. My question is, will I know the area that you serve? So that's just a question is that, um, Right here, I got an address, a mailing address that says New Orleans, um, Louisiana, which is awesome. Um, I would just encourage that you may want to just, um, right here, balloon delivery to greater New Orleans and surrounding areas. You got it. <laughs> All right, so those kinds of words are so important because so many times we think people understand the abbreviations and we don't always know the abbreviations in today's day and age people are moving from country to country and city to city and we don't always know the lingo so wanting to make sure that we clarify that on our website is great so thumbs up danielle awesome all right so what i want to do now is i want to check and see if people have other questions for me um, I am going to show you just a tidbit about Party People events um, and what I have done on our website is that it goes right here to the contact form and on that contact form this is a fun installation that um, I got to be a part of we had two teams of five people work 10 hour shifts each to be able to um, put up these huge um, balloon clouds at the convention center in Orlando. It's so fun for me to be able to be a part of a growing dynamic team now that does over a half a million dollars a year in sales. And that is one of the reasons I get so excited bringing you guys to Orlando every year for our promotions and profits retreat in November, the 11th through the 15th for 2019, is that you get to hang out with Jonathan Gerber, myself, and other parts of our team to talk to us about these types of large scale events that we do here in Orlando and help inspire you to do the same. Party People Events is actually all of these companies coming together. Party People Celebration Company I used to own. Twisted Arts was the entertainment company that Jonathan started with. The Balloon Connection is the decor company that he bought before mine. And Balloons on the Run is the decor company we most recently purchased. So all four of those companies, we now all operate together under Party People events. So Jonathan wanted to kind of let people know, no matter where they are from, hey, you're in the right place. We all work together now. And on our contact form, we're giving them actual budget ranges. Because sometimes people tell me, hey, Joette, I have a minimum. How do I tell my clients that? One of the way that you can do that is by having these ranges, 100 to 299, 300 to 499, over $1,000. Having those different budgets are really important. And some of the clients that I know that work with really, companies who work with a lot of high-end clients, they even put things like 5,000 to 6,000, 8,000 to 10,000, 10,000 and up. So you can kind of think about your situation and um, put those numbers there so people can kind of know, oh, we didn't know we could spend over $1,000 on balloons, all right? Um, all right, Flavia, put yours up there for me. Um, and for us, we offer entertainment services also, so we have all of that there so that people can check that, okay? Um, let's see, and then also we had, you know, who are you referred by? So just wanted to kind of show you that that information is there. <laughs> and Danielle is saying that she stole the price range um, question from our site and changed how often I got an actual budget from clients. That's awesome, I love it. Um, all right, so here we go, Flavia. And, am I saying your name right? I, I feel like I'm butchering it every time. 
All right. <laughs> Um, let's see. And I really love her name. Let's see. So I was typing it in the wrong part. All right. So here's what I love is Partistry Events is the name of her company. Isn't that fun? Um, such a cool logo. Um, and just really, really nice. I have, um, when people have a background in um, web development and in um, working with graphic arts and things, it's just a dynamic to see how their websites come to life. So stunning event decor services in Maryland to see and surrounding areas lets me know right up front where she's at. I have this beautiful, bold photo up front that gets me hooked in and wanting to know more. On the right-hand side, it's showing me quick and easy corporate events, weddings, baby and bridal showers, grand openings, mitzvahs, and birthday parties. We love parties. This is what's called an engaging website. There's personality, there's color, and there's great explanation. It is very quick and easy for me to see what she does. Not only is she doing themed, balloon decor, but she has the basic balloon decor or stunning balloon decor, and she has a unique invitations and event branding. It's all right there up front to let me see all three parts of what she's doing. And it's telling me everywhere to go see photos, right? <laughs> and get started. Right here is that contact form at the bottom of that home page and the, giving me your first name, your last name, your phone number, your email address, I love it, company if applicable. The details on your event is so important. The more information you get up front right here is key. I love it, what type of venue. So, and she's giving suggestions right here under what type of event, she's putting the suggestions, hall, home, school, business, hotel. That's nice because sometimes when they just give you the address, you're not sure, especially like if they, um, their address is within a country club, is the actual event happening at the country club or is the event happening at their personal home? And you don't wanna just assume that it's in one or the other. So that's great to know what type of venue. That's a great question, I love it. Guest of honor's name. This is a wonderful way for you to build rapport with people when you follow up of, wow, I am looking forward to decorating for your daughter Susie's birthday party, okay? So that's great information. Um, where are the events gonna be held? How did you hear about us? Excellent. And then what type of a decor are you looking for us to help you with? Mark all that apply. Look at this amazing list that she has put together with a ton of options, okay? So we go from full service theme party, organic balloon decor, balloon towers, name arch, balloon characters, balloon centerpieces, table coverings, organic balloon wall, um, balloon bouquets, balloon drops, confetti cannons, others. It's giving you this long list because here's what happens. So many times I hear people say, oh man, I hate Pinterest or I hate social media because somebody sent me this picture that they want me to recreate. But you know what? Maybe they have this picture that they want to recreate, but now when they go down this list and say, wow, pipe and drape, balloon ceiling, that sounds neat. Ooh, you can do a balloon drop? I never thought about that. It's giving, it's planting seeds in their head of things they may not have thought of before. So Flavia, thumbs up, rocket, this is awesome. And then tell us a little bit more about your event gets you wonderful details. And what's really great here is it says choose files to upload. So your client can actually send you other pictures. Um, so that's excellent. I love it. Very nice. All right. So I'm getting a question of what platforms and apps are they using to generate the forms? Um, so Flavia, do you mind um, answering that of what platform you were using to um, do the forms that you've got on your website? Um, I'll, I'll go up and check your question, Daisy, I promise. So one of the things that I will let you guys know is that there are several different um, forms out there. Um, Flavia is saying that the website is on WordPress, but the form came straight from Dubsado. And Dubsado is D-U-B-S-A-D-O. 
Dubsado is a program that Diana Gladden spoke about in February on her webinar that she uses uh, for her contact me um, messenger, contact, well, I can't talk today, <laughs> for her contact management system. And Dubsado allows when a client fills out that contact form for this wonderful program to capture all that information for you. And then you can have email set to go off and say, thank you so much for filling out our contact form. We'll get back with you within 24 hours with a quote, or we'll give you a call for questions. And then as you send them a quote, it gives them a way to pay, it gives them a way to ask questions, and now everything is neat and tidy right within that customer management system. So Dubsado is one of the tools that many people in our industry use to keep everything running smoothly. And Bobby is saying it is the best tool ever. So obviously she's happy with it. I know some people struggle with it. Um, Danielle um, from New Orleans also said that she uses Dubsado. And um, if you struggle with how to use technology to make it work, Diana Gladden, who's one of my instructors um, for our webinars, she now has a system to help people with their forms. And she also refers people to people who are excellent at doing Dubsado and can help write your forms and do the formatting and programming for you. So you don't have to do all of that yourself if you struggle in that area. So great examples, guys. I love this. So here's the thing. We're getting ready to be on together for almost an hour, but I want to go ahead and make sure that I answer the questions of all of those who took time today to be with me live. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna look at those questions. While I'm doing that, what I would love to know from people real quick is, how long has it been since you've been on to ballooncoach.com? My website is there to be a resource for you to help you grow your business. And I just wanted to make sure that you are aware that it's there for you with the free blog, but there's also information on there where you can click on the live tour for the summer and see all of the places that we are going to be at and pick the city that you want to come join me in. I'm traveling 7,000 miles this summer, over 50 days to be able to bring this live training to you. What I would love to know is how far you're willing to travel because one of the door prizes I'm gonna give at every one of my stops is gonna to go to the person who traveled the far furthest to that stop. So this is the map of where I'm going. And what I'm gonna be teaching is classic balloon decor, also some tips and tricks to organics, not only for latex, but for foils. I'm gonna talk about lighting for neon balloons and supersized balloon lights and other lighting features for your balloons. And then we're gonna talk about how to be profitable and the sales conversation process. So it's gonna be an awesome jam-packed full day. I have amazing sponsors who are bringing me goodies that I'm going to be able to do as door prizes throughout the day. And I hope to see you super soon. All right. All right, Michelle was just checking the tour cities yesterday. Wonderful, glad to see that. So I'm going to go and um, check back in here now with the questions that I may have missed because I don't want to miss anybody. The other thing that I want to let you guys know about that's coming up is in November is our Orlando Promotions and Profits Retreat. I have 12 seats left, okay? We are seven months out from the event and there are only 12 seats left. We do have a six-month payment plan. And if you have not checked things out about that, there's a video right there on the website that you can see what's special and dynamic about hanging out in a room with 85 balloon professionals and 12 instructors that are focused on you and helping you build a plan for your business. So I would love for you guys to come hang out in um, Orlando with me if you're not signed up yet. I know many of you already are. Um, let's see. I'm going up, Daisy. I'm gonna go find yours. All right, so Daisy is asking me about how to watermark. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually doing a separate training on that. I've done a couple of them that are on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't been to my YouTube recently, you can go to Bloom Coach YouTube and um, you'll find one there. I'm gonna be doing another one that will be going up tomorrow 
Um, I just needed to fix something that was on it. Um, a couple of the programs that I use from watermarking is on my phone. I use um, PicMonkey, P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y. I'll type that in, Pick M-O-N. K-E-Y. Pick Monkey is something that I learned originally from Jill Shortread many years ago. She did a webinar for us. It's in my Balloon Boss Mastermind webinar um, archives. Um, and it's great because she showed us step by step how to use Pick Monkey to do different um, things with our photos. So I like it and it's easy. Another one that I also um, subscribe to is Canva, C A N V A. And um, some people like um, to use iWatermark, um, which is another one that you can put on your phone. I, the letter I, and watermark. The thing that I like about PicMonkey especially, and I think Canva does it too, but I just haven't used it as much, is that it has a hub. So I can be using my different, because I have my Balloon Coach logo, plus I have my Party People Events logo, I watermark for both. I have both of those in my hub, so I can access that through my phone or through my computer, and it's all kind of staying consistent, which is nice and helpful. Um, let's see. Michelle Scott is saying that she's looking forward to Promotions and Profits Orlando. Woo woo! <laughs> I'm glad. Can't wait. It's going to be fun. So let's see, Miss Daisy, I want to make sure that I'm not missing your question. All right, so Daisy said she shut her website down temporarily for the very reason um, I said not to, waiting, waiting for perfection. I will put it back up immediately now. Excellent. She has Shopify as a platform, but is concerned because it is requiring her to sell an item and I'm not wanting to sell button form. What do you recommend? Um, I think I don't totally understand the question. Um, I believe if you have a shopping cart on your um, computer and you want to stop using it, you can actually um, typically turn that off. Um, one of the people that I know that can help you with that is balloonsuite.com. And Balloonsuite.com is ran by a balloon professional named Brandon. He is one of our instructors for Promotions and Profits Retreat in Orlando. He's an awesome guy. He's done a free webinar for me um, for information about Balloon Suite. And it's in my YouTube channel. And it's also on my Facebook page and um, Balloon Coach Community Facebook page. But if you go on here and send him a note, I'm sure he can help you out. The other thing that you can do is to contact him is in um, Facebook land. <laughs> I'm gonna show you Balloon Coach Me. Or I'm gonna show you Brandon. All right, so you can see his smiling face, his adorable girls. So um, Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N-T-U-R-P-I-N. You can find him on Facebook or give him a shout out in Balloon Coach community. And while we're talking about that, I wanna make sure you guys know if you're not connected with me in my Facebook group, Balloon Coach community, I would love for you to be um, here. I went in today and an hour ago, I put up the social media website checklist PDF. So you can go in there and click the checklist that I gave you guys today and print it out to use later on. And let's see. So um, if you have other technical questions about how to set up your website, um, Brandon is great at giving information, even if you're not using him with Balloon Suite. He is wanting to help out our balloon industry. And so you can just go into Balloon Coach Community and type a note, hey, Brandon, I heard you might be able to answer a few questions. This is what I've got going on. Can you get in touch with me um, or send him a private message? I'm sure he'd be glad to help you out. Oh, okay, and Mark Zettler is on with us tonight, and he is, or this afternoon, he's saying, not trying to be a commercial, but my son is a Shopify expert, and that is his title, um, working with Shop, 
Shopify. So um, there's only a hundred people that um, are Shopify's whizzes and his name is Benjamin Zettler. So I'm gonna type that in there. And then the balloon person who referred him is Mark Zettler. Hey Mark, welcome today, glad you're on with us. So guys, if you need help with um, Shopify specifically, that's another person that can help you out. Um, that is a thing that I absolutely love about the balloon industry is that we have so many wonderful connections and um, all you have to do is ask and people will help you out. So um, Daisy, I just put his email address up there for you too for Mark in case you didn't see it because I'm not sure if you see everything. All right, guys, we have been online for an hour and I am so glad that you are here with me today that you are taking interest in stepping up your game with your online presence. And there's a couple of things that I just want to show you in case you don't know about them. And one of that is that I do have past webinars that can give you even more detailed information about social media, about how to use um, your online marketing and find more people online. So if you're one of my monthly subscribers and you missed it when Brandon did our webinar, you click on webinar, you click on ask access passport to success replays and this is our monthly webinars that happen the fourth tuesday of every month and when you go down you'll see the most recent first so holland was my last speaker and she did a great job talking about building your professional referral partners and wedding shows and mitzvah shows then diana i talked about her a couple of times about growing your business and staying sane as you keep on going down the page, right here in the middle is Brandon. And Brandon did how to find new customers online starting today. And he has a great system to help you connect all your social media and to do Google ads and things like that. So if you're wanting extra help, there's two ways you can get a hold of that. Well, actually three. If you're already a Passport to Success member and you were around during Brandon's, that, that replay is just sitting there in your member area for you to go back and listen to. If you missed it, go back and enjoy it. A lot of times people tell me that they listen to the replays while they're driving in their car so they can get inspired and remember new things. If you've never been a part, I encourage you to join Balloon Boss Mastermind. And what Balloon Boss Mastermind does is it allows you to access all of the past webinars that have been going on since 2015. My very first speaker was David Mahoney in Dallas, Texas, who does over a million and a half a year in balloon sales. I've had a lot of other awesome speakers. But you just click here and click become a Balloon Boss Mastermind member and you're good to go. You can also click up here under Mastermind and it shows you all the details of everything that comes in your $97 a month membership, which is also access to a group coaching group that I am in on a regular basis answering questions and also having access to a lot of other resources that I've created just for Balloon Boss Mastermind. So wanted to let you know those resources are there for you to help. I hate when I hear that there are people who've been in the industry a long time or are brand new and they're struggling when I know there is all this amazing information who's sitting there for you to learn from some of the best people in the industry of what tips and tricks they've used to become successful. That information is sitting there for you. So just wanted to let you know those resources are available to work for you 24 seven. All right, so before I hang up, I just want to know, I need to know if there's any other questions. Oh, and the name is Zettler to answer your question, Daisy. All right, so guys, for those of you who are still on with me live, do you have any other questions that I can answer for you? I am so excited that you are taking time to work on your business. 
it's so easy for us to stay busy and to forget about things that we've created in the past. I encourage you that every six months, if not every quarter, that you go in and just look at your website, look at your social media with fresh eyes, act like you're brand new and never touched it, or maybe even ask somebody else to go online and to review, review things and then step it up a notch. If you need help with that, I'm Joette with Balloon Coach. Dot com. I'm here to be your partner in success and to help you grow a thriving balloon business. And when you have questions, you can always email me joette at ballooncoach.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Balloon Coach, or you can also become a member of our Balloon Coach community on Facebook to be able to get more information to help you in growing your business.